Hello, and welcome to Guaranteed Adventures. What you're about to hear is a promotion from Tomes of the Chaos Bard, another family-friendly actual play tabletop RPG podcast. If you enjoy us, and you thought, I would love it if they have a longer story, then you should head on over to Tomes of the Chaos Bard. They're fun, they're funny, and they have original music. So without further ado, Tomes of the Chaos Bard. Our story starts in the land Caleth, where a goblinoid power is rising in the north with contention in its wake. We follow our intrepid heroes who I have called to bring balance to the chaos. Our fearless leader, Roscoe. So you're the leader of this group. Well, that's what they tell me. Our lady with one body and two minds, Lila and Garatha. There are two of us here. They're very distinct personalities, but... Never, never dull moment, never lonely, that's for sure. Our timid Henley. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Mm. <laughs> Our adventurous Fenrir. And he's going to start making his way, but he wants to be playing songs. <laughs> <laughs> and our wise Boudreaux. Once upon a time, they'd be human, and then they turn into a scary animal, and that's why you call them where, because you don't know where the human went. But Tomes of the Chaos Bard, an actual play D&D podcast with original songs and music. A podcast for all ages. You can find us on any major podcast platform and YouTube. I am Solemn the Chaos Bard. Come join us as we unroll the scroll to tell the tale. <laughs> Bye. Before we jump into this episode, just a quick reminder, we are playing in the 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons system using the Humblewood campaign setting. If you would like to look up any more information about any of those, uh, the links will be in the description of this podcast. Welcome to Guaranteed Adventures, where the story might change, but the adventure is guaranteed. I am your GM, Tim, and going around the table, we've got... Nathan playing Bertram Honksleaf. Seth playing Otis Sagrain. The other Seth playing Quill Graybell. And Kyle playing Jean Autant. Last session, Jean and Quill woke up and again said goodbye to their families. They then met for breakfast at the monastery, where the current caretakers of the Marshview Monastery bestowed upon them blessings and gave them gifts, uh, abundance of abundance to use on their mission. As they were making their way to Saltair's port to consult the library there about the prophecy that uh, Otis gave them, they came upon a burn caravan that had been attacked. They found an ash snake in the ruins of the caravans uh, and rescued a rabbit family from the outskirts of the carnage. Uh, the rabbit family said that a group of bandits attacked them that was led by a wolf favoring one shoulder. And Jean was very put out by the description of this wolf and uh, convinced the whole party to abandon their quest for the Great Maple and head back and fight this wolf. So, you guys are going back to Marshview, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Are you just booking it, hightailing it, uh, stealthily sneaking, um, I singing, before. singing camp songs before? I think we're just booking it. Yeah. As we run, I'm probably running next to, next to Bertram. I don't know. Would you guys be ahead of? Yeah. We, we, who would be out front? I'd be up front. Bertram probably would actually also be up front. <laughs> I'd be up front, front. Sure. <laughs> I'd just be. I'd probably just be riding your shoulder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll just run next. I'll. I'll pro I'm as we're running. I'm gonna turn to Bertram and be like, "So, Bertram, what's the deal with this wolf guy?" This wolf guy. There is a. He's done a many of a slight. Against all of us. For one, he killed my father. What? For two, <laughs> he killed uh, Jean's uh, partner, who was my father. What? 
Dun, dun, dun. Man. This is personal. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. He, he died protecting the ones he loved. Otis nods. Yeah, I... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. I, I didn't know him very well. Um, he was always, you know, a father figure, but I wasn't there. I wasn't part of that regiment of training. He, he's just John's uh, father. And I, I, as much as this mission for the Maple Leaf is important, you know, I understand that this, this needs to happen. There needs to be justice. So what's the name of the guy we're after? I do not know his name. But all I know is the mark I left him. Six years ago. Six years. <laughs> three months. Twelve days. <laughs> Thirteen hours. Thirteen hours. Twenty-four minutes. <laughs> Two sec. Three sec. Four sec. Five sec. <laughs> <laughs> Just the whole time you're running, just <laughs> counting so, off seconds. This wolf is my biggest shame in life. So what's the plan here? What are we going to do with this guy? I will show him the power of the maple. I think, for the most part, he will die. Okay. <laughs> well, that, that was direct. <laughs> oh, sorry, yes. Uh, that is what I do. So, it be direct whenever I take care of somebody these bandits oh. are truly the enemy of the maple well surely and they're not any all. enemy of the maple deserves to die agreed <laughs> well okay. Uh, well, well okay. uh, they can't all be that bad right <laughs> that, that is an extreme view of as we're running well as you all are running and i'm yeah. just on there and i look down at you um, are you riding bertram i'm faster than all of you as a rogue, oh, well, I guess you could actually run as fast as me. Probably. Because as a rogue, we can bonus action dash. <laughs> I'm actually pretty slow. So we can cover... <laughs> pretty slow. At a dead sprint, we could move 90 feet per turn. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, no, you are faster than me. Oh, do you're you have 15, a slower? You're 15 feet faster. Nice. I can only do 25, audience. I can only do 25 feet, and um, Otis can do 30. So, um, yeah. So as, as we're... As you all are running, <laughs> and so I'm not out of breath, I'm assuming that I can be some of the talking... Uh, yes. Well, so that is an extreme viewpoint of the certain members of the Maple Leaf Order, the Order of the Maple Leaf. And while there is a look, I have no issue with getting rid of people that need to be get, gotten rid of. Right. This is one of those people. I don't necessarily think the Order of the Maple Leaf would fully back my two colleagues here's view of any enemy of the maple <laughs> deserves to no longer breathe. Yeah, I mean, like, the okay. speaker the, the speaker taught us about mercy. I must have missed that. <laughs> <laughs> you were probably training. All oh, right, training to Look, kill. <laughs> it sounds like this guy's a bad dude. If this is, the, if this is what we got to do, I mean, I'll support you. This dude is the one that makes me wear this helmet all the time. Why do you wear the helmet all the time? This wolf left me with a hideous scar that I've only ever shown to two people. My wife and Quill. That's me. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Quill, Quill. Sure. Yes, yes. Look, I'm, I think I'm going to check on the rabbits. I'm going to drop back. and So you go back and check on the rabbits, and they're uh, pretty much just hopping along. They they really don't don't uh, have much care. They're not really listening. Yeah. They're, that they're... conversation just got too awkward for Otis, and he needed to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the scenery around you guys as you're running uh, is uh, very, very tall trees, uh, lots of boulders and hills and, and things that uh, really, if you wanted to make an ambush— this would be the perfect place to make an ambush. Would I be familiar with this probably area? I mean, yeah, yeah, you'd you'd probably know uh, what's what what all's around and and. Uh... So are we are we from? Do we think that they are like at the yes. town? Yeah, they're they're based on how long it took you guys to walk to there and how the rabbits told them, you know, told you the timeline. 
they're probably either at Marsh View or will be there very soon. So are we most likely to catch them leaving Marsh View? Or uh, are we trying to get ahead of so them? So at some point, we would have passed each other on the road, but we did not see them. Or it, or, or they, they were not on the taking road. the yeah. road, yes. But we would have... Yes, we yes. would have crossed. You would have crossed, crossed paths. paths yes. at some point. So since we're heading back, mm-hmm. if this is a good place for an ambush, as far as we know, we're behind them. As far as you know, you are two hours behind them, three hours behind them. Yeah, I I don't think that Quill thinks that this is the best place to wait. Right. I think, especially because you know they're on their way to Marshview. They have to no our reason our to families. suspect that we are following. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have no reason to suspect we are following them. So I'd say we just keep going. And then maybe I'll look at Otis. Like, are you are you pretty sneaky? I can hold my own. How about Otis and I run ahead? Okay. And we see if we can observe them to kind of see. If or you... if I can track them and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so you, so Quill and Otis are running on ahead, being sneaky, being stealthy. Trying to, I think, seeing if I can find their path, maybe. I'll Perfect. even venture into the woods and see. Okay. Uh, there are a bunch of trees around. Yes. I'll use my ring of jumping Ooh. and just jump up in a tree. There you go. Nice. And see, get a look around. Yeah. See if I can see anything. Uh, so uh, Quill, make a stealth check, and Otis, make a perception check. Whoo, Betsy. I don't think that's real great. Natural one. <laughs> that's so a total of 10. <laughs> nice. Hey, 10. That's not bad. Yeah. Seven. Seven. Uh, what, are, what are all of your passive perceptions? 13. 14. A German, no. Nine. Nine. Oh. Ten. <laughs> Nine, ten. Okay, perfect. So you guys have been running for about an hour and a half, two hours. So you're, pro- you're pretty close to Marshview now at this point. That's when uh, Otis and Quill, you go up into the trees and, and try and scout ahead. Uh, and as uh, you go out, you hear uh, a whistle, a couple of whistles. It coming from the trees off the path, like kind of up this hill, and they, it, it's definitely like they're trying to sound like birds, but kind of failing. But also, if you're not paying attention, it kind of sounds like a bird. Look up here! Look, look up here! Look up here! <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys! Look up here! Look up here! <laughs> By exactly Steve like Martin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You said they're in the trees, coming from the trees? Uh, it's kind of, so the path kind of goes between two hills, and yep. it's going up the hill. Uh, it's kind of where you hear, up one of the hills is where you hear the whistles coming from. I'll, uh, I'm, since I'm up in a treetop, I'll look down at Quill specifically and gesture. That <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try to point that I'm going that way towards the whistle. Got it. I will, um, actually, I'll, mm, yeah, you do that. I'll go back and get these guys and tell them we're going this way. Perfect. So I'll just, I'll keep my ring of jumping active. I'll okay. use a bonus action whenever I need to. And just, I want to jump from treetop to treetop and just go straight for the whistle, basically. Nice. Uh, make a stealth check. Come on. Because I'm guessing you're not trying to crash through the leaves and... I actually, just... we don't care about crashing through the leaves. Okay. I mean... I'm... I'll, I'll try to be stealthy. Okay. Yeah. Have one of us rogues actually do something good. <laughs> Fourteen. Uh, yeah, so you are jumping uh, up through the up through the trees from treetop to treetop, and you get kind of to the top of the the trees or to, to the top of the hill, and you see that there are uh, two bandits who are kind of a couple of trees apart, but that they're definitely like looking down at the path, making those whistle sounds, and behind them, uh, down the hill in kind of this little ravine, is uh, a campfire with two groups of people surrounded. And from this distance, you can't really tell details or anything. But yeah, that's what you see. Okay. What time of day is it? It's pretty close to evening. Uh, sun's going to set in probably about an hour or so. I want to try to get over the camp and see who's at the camp. Okay. Uh, Stealthily. Make another stealth check. Seven. Seven. Uh, and make a perception check. Seven. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so you're kind of hopping through the leaves, through the trees, and uh, what's distracting uh, Otis as he's trying to do this? Uh, I think I hear the the rare 
look up here, bird. <laughs> the like the it, I, I I hear a bird and I'm like, oh man, there's another one. Um, yeah, but it's actually just an actual bird. Gotcha. So you uh, maybe chase after that bird a little bit and come in. Yeah, investigate. Yep. Uh, so by the time you get uh, to a good position to look down at the camp, you can see everybody is looking just like directly up at you and just watching you jump from like branch okay. to branch and everything. Uh, but what you see down there are uh, just a group of uh, kind of smaller mopok, so like raccoon type uh, people. And then you see a big raccoon, a jerbean squirrel type acrobatic type like that, a uh, chicken gallus type that's in uh, flowing robes. And on his back is Im- there's a symbol embroidered on there of like a group of trees with some humble folk and bird folk all drawn with like a single continuous line. And then you see a big gray wolf uh, who has a patch of hair missing from one of his shoulders. Okay. What color is the squirrel? Uh, the squirrel is brown, kind of like a reddish brown, uh, similar to your color. And these all look like bandits? Yes. You said they're smaller raccoon people? Yeah. Like not, not like super small, but like... Like kids? No, no, not okay. kids. I'm just going to stay at my treetop, I guess. So everybody's looking at me. Yeah. I'll they're all, <laughs> they all see you. <laughs> I'll say, uh, hi, how y'all doing? Uh, everybody kind of looks at that big gray wolf and uh, he comes up and says, hello, who are you? My name is Jeff Westerton. I'm with the Traders Guild. We're just headed on our way to Marshview. Heard a ruckus up here. Jeff Westerton. Hmm, I do not know if that is your real name. And he looks to the squirrel beside him and uh, motions for him to go check it out. So he climbs up the tree uh, and looks at you and says, Clover, is that you? It can't be. You ran away from the circus months ago. Or was it just yesterday? I get my days mixed up. Do I recognize this person? You would definitely recognize this as one of the other acrobats in uh, the troop that you were traveling with. Okay. Hmm. Doesn't sound like me. Just old Jeff here. Well, see you later. And I'm just going to jump 90 feet away. (laughs) Okay. I'm not going to jump directly back the direction towards them. I want to go, like, off to the side and then make my way around. Okay. Nice. You hear just, like, a a little cackling laugh behind you as you jump away. Uh, Yeah, and I'll just make my way back around to where you guys are on the ground. We are making our way towards you. Okay, so there's definitely a camp of bandits up there. There's a big old wolfy guy. I think it's the one you're looking for. Did he have a patch of skin missing on his shoulder? Yeah, that sounds right. Something was up with his shoulder. Goofy accent. Ridiculous. (laughs) Couldn't place it. (laughs) How do you know about the accent? You weren't there. You told me about it multiple times. (laughs) You have read. Retold the story many times. Every every year really? on the anniversary of your father's death, you tell us on his and, father's death. <laughs> yes. <laughs> every My year, death? every every year, you tell us about the story of your mentor's death in the anniversary. You care more than Bertram. <laughs> <laughs> he he knows oh, more of the details okay, look, than I look, do. There's a crowd of bandits. How, yeah, how many? Um. There was a rooster, uh, there was a wolf, there was a squirrel, there was a big raccoon, there was some little raccoons. How many little raccoons? I don't know. Couldn't tell. Numbers are important? Well, yes, it is if we are That's two. honestly all I remember. <laughs> okay. Should have written this down. <laughs> it is okay. You Quite a few anyway. Numbers are not important. Quite a few. You at least were not seen though, right? Oh, I was definitely seen. Oh. <laughs> well, so they know we're here. They know I'm here. I didn't say anything about you. Can we... How do they spy you? I like the stage. It speaks to me. You hear from up the hill, Clover! I told him my name was Clover. Don't worry about it. Clover, where did you go? Uh, I suggest that we be stealthy. So okay, you here. guys hide. I'll lead this one away. Head up. I'm going to point to where the actual camp is. Head up there. You'll find the camp. I'll keep this one away so he doesn't spot you. I'll jump back up in the trees and say, okay. 
You're going to have to try harder than that if you want to catch me. Oh, I don't want to catch you. I just want to uh, have a little chat. Uh, and I'll just start jumping away from where they are. I'll okay. kind of try to loop back around to the other side of the camp. Okay. So that I'm on the far side. Um, as we as we kind of sneak away, I'm going to cast Pass Without Trace. So Ooh. that way we get a bonus to our stealth. Nice. Because I know my two friends are not as stealthy as I am. Yeah. And hopefully this time, I can actually do something. Yeah. All so, right. Uh, yeah, you guys all make stealth checks. So you guys have a plus 10 on, and on top of everything else that you roll. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. yeah that's this is a thing? That's yeah. Pass Without Trace. Yeah, it's crazy good. Uh, I got a 33. 19. <laughs> hey, glad nice. we got that plus 10. Okay. 17. 17. Nice. So my Pass Without Trace, when I cast it, it um, I since I can speak with bugs, Ooh. I'm going to ask bugs to kind of like kind of deafen our steps a little bit. So they're going to like get in between the your armor, I'm looking at Jean, to kind of like soften some of it. And then um, on Bertram, uh, since you're not the, the most quiet where you step, I'm going to ask the bugs kind of like move sticks and everything out of the way. And for me, they're just kind of making me a moving on top of my displacement cloak. They're just kind of like moving on top of it and everything. Nice. I like the crickets and grasshoppers chirping louder too. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Nice. So you guys are being super stealthy with your bug friends and uh, you kind of are, are you kind of coming up the hill as, as one and trying to see down? Yeah. So what you see as you look down uh, is much like Otis described a small group of uh bandits uh raccoon bandits and then a large bandit who has strapped a large box onto his back there is also a uh, rooster with flowing robes and the wolf uh that you see so how many do we see you see six regular bandits large bandit a the guy's robed guy and the wolf so nine and then 10 would be the uh, other acrobat guy who um, took off with Otis. Yes, took off with Otis. Slash Clover. Yes. Suspiciously. Sus- but I'm not suspicious. Don't yeah, be what I suspicious. Name was. Don't, Don't be suspicious. suspicious. We've probably done some sort of training like this since. Oh yeah, all of your training is like yeah. You, you guys, guys are in your element now. Team. Okay. Death is my element. <laughs> Death. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of make eye contact with Bertram and uh, Jean and kind of just nod and say, "Do what we do best here." I'll save the wolf for you. I look at Jean and Bertram. I'll take care of the rest. I'll get the fruit. I believe it. As you're kind of like coming up and trying to form some kind of plan of attack, uh, everybody roll initiative, and we will start that now. Quill. 25. 25. Yeah, yeah. Whoop, whoop. Otis. 18. 18. Jean. Uh, 14. 14. Nice. And Bertram. 10. 10. As you're all kind of approaching the camp before uh, you act, the uh, wolf uh, doesn't look up, doesn't look around, but says, Hmm, I seem to hear a moose traipsing through the woods. That would not be one of the moose knights. I don't think so. They left. I wonder, who could that be? All right, so... Otis, we'll start with you. You're up first. Okay. A couple of knowledge questions. Yeah. Would I know... Do I remember this guy's name? Yeah. Wesley Greywinter. Wesley. Um, and also, do I... Would I know either the name or title of the person who is in charge of the Bandit Coalition? Uh... Or a, a, a nomaker that he goes by if the... If it, I don't know. Would yeah. I know anything about what he would be called? Yeah... Let's say he goes by uh, the nomaker, the true maple. Okay. I want to basically just go on the opposite side of the camp of where they are and okay. stop, like, keep a, be on a different tree than okay. Wesley that's chasing me, but I would stop and talk to him. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, funnily enough, he's up next. Uh, so you stop and he kind of uh, hops a couple of trees away and says, Clover, so nice 
to see you again. Wesley, you smug fool. What are you doing? What do you mean, what am I doing? What are you doing? I'm infiltrating the Order of the Maple. Do you have any idea what kind of treasure they have in there? What? The Great (laughs) Maple put me on this privately. You're interfering with a huge score. You need to lay off. Well... Are you sure about that? Yes. Make a make a deception check. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Oh, sorry. Twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such a big difference. It's so big. Now he doesn't believe you. Oh, um, he says, "Oh, well, I did think it was rather strange how you just up and left the circus. I mean, we were pulling some good gigs there. Yes. Look, he doesn't want." Everybody know about this until it's done. But this is going to be the biggest score we've had in years. Okay. Well, I I mean, I guess you uh, take off then? I don't know. What am I supposed to just, tell these guys? The guys, what, my band. Just stay out of the way. It looks like there's some sort of scuffle going on down there. Look, do these guys have anything good on them? I mean, oh. hey, look, you help me get some of the good stuff, I'll cut you in halfway. Okay. Well, I mean, I can't steal from these guys because, I mean... I'm... No, but you can sure tell me where it is. Well, uh, yeah, and he points down, he says, you see that big box there? Yeah. The one that was marked with a big HB? Yeah. That is going to change the fates of all of us in the Bandit Coalition. And this is the box that's on somebody's back? Th- that's the okay. box that's on the uh, the, yeah, the big uh, raccoon's back. Okay. Okay. And, so, and I so think we're that, out of time. Yeah. yeah. And so he's just kind of hanging out uh, up there with you. Quill. So, I get four attacks. Okay. <laughs> nice. So, uh, I get two regular attacks, but then because of my class feature of a ranger, I get an extra attack. Okay. Um, since it's my first attack, so I only get three for the first one. Okay. And then as a crossbow expert, I get a bonus attack I choose to do with my bonus action. Gotcha. And since I have the crossbow expert feat, I don't have to reload. Okay. So, I'm going to be making four attacks, and I'm going to go with the rooster first. Okay. And then I'll go after just the regular bandits. Okay. I will... Do I get advantage because I'm hidden? You would get advantage on the first one. Okay. Because then after that you would not be hidden anymore. Great. 22. 22. Yeah, that hits. Cool. So then I get to add my sneak attack to that. 17 damage for the first one. Ooh. Nice. Okay. 15. Uh, 15 does not hit. Okay. 22. 22 hits. Uh, that's just four damage. Okay. And then... Uh, that was higher. 25. Yeah. That was six damage. Six. Nice. I think that's four. Yep. Nice. So I'm just unloading on this rooster. Yeah. Just with a crossbow that you don't have to Correct. reload. As, as you're firing at him, the, the wolf also says, Oh, it looks like we have some other specialists here as well. Hmm. I think we can deal with all of you. Next up, we've got the rooster who was just shot three times. Uh, so he will use a bonus action to fly up into the air uh, using a wing flap feat. He flies up 15 feet in the air. Uh, and then casts Wall of Fire in between uh, himself, the wolf, and uh, the big raccoon, and the rest of the bandits and you guys. So uh, there is now a large wall of fire that springs to life, uh, blocking you guys off from those three and basically trapping the smaller guys in there with you. Uh, that's his go. Fire in the forest. Fire Dangerous. in the forest. Yes. And then you guys can't necessarily see through this giant wall of fire. Uh, so something happens on the other side. And Jean, it is your turn. Well, you can't see me now, Danny. Question. No. Yes. I'm on the other side of the you fire. You are on right? the other side of the fire. Do I see something that happens? Both the wolf and the ra- big raccoon start running off. Like away from the fight? Like away from the fight. Yep. Okay. And this is the big raccoon with the box. Yes. Okay. Yep. Big raccoon with the box. You guys are still hidden. I haven't dropped. Pass without a trace. Yep. I specifically did not cast Hunter's Mark for that reason. Nice. Cool. Jean's not the brightest. And his usual go plan is just charge. Okay. 
So Jean is just going to charge. <laughs> nice. Do it. Charge in. He's gonna charge over the hill, down the hill. Yeah. And strike the first bandit he sees. Nice. Yeah, I'm using uh, these six guys in a bandit raiding party, kind of a more of a mob type configuration. So uh, roll to hit. Come on. Does he get advantage because he's hidden? Yes. That's a natural 20. Natural 20. Oh, this is perfect. So the way I uh, run criticals, a little bit of a homebrew-ish, whatever your weapon damage is, if you get a crit, that weapon damage is maxed. So usually on a critical hit, you either roll two damage dice or double the one you roll. The way I do it is you roll one and then take the max of what that die would be. So if it's a d12, you would roll a d12, add 12, and add whatever modifiers you have. So you get a bonus max dice. Exactly. Yeah, that's what the critical gives nice. you. Nice. So. Well, I rolled max on the dice, too. So <laughs> that is oh, geez. 24. Oh, my God. Goodness. Yeah, you come barreling oh, through. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I forgot the 1d6 force of damage. Oh, that's right. So 31. <laughs> It's, Mike, ki- it's Mike, kind of a Mike, rule Mike. with the paladins. When you roll a natural twenty, you have to smite. I mean, you kind of. Who do. are you attacking? I was the, attacking that the mob of six guys. raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Mike. <laughs> it's, a, it's a rule. You roll it's a natural twenty for the audience. It's not a rule, but it, <laughs> but is. it is. It's an unspoken rule. Yeah, that's right. Or an unwritten rule, perhaps. So if I'm smiting as well, do those get maxed as well? Yes. So that's already 16. Any any damage <laughs> die that is rolled is maxed. I like this. Right? Because a lot of times, like, you can crit, hit, and roll less than a regular damage, so. So I had 24. Yep. Plus the 7. It's 31. 31 plus 12. Plus 7. 50. 50? Oh. 50 flat. Oh, jeez. You're insane. <laughs> you come barreling through. I am very mad. Yeah. You come barreling through. Uh, horns or antlers probably lowered, just ready to go. And you just wipe out <laughs> five of these guys. They're just gone. And there's they one. Are there are six. Yeah. And there's now one. There is now one, and he's very injured. And now for a second attack. <laughs> now for my second attack. <laughs> oh, jeez. He's just terrified. Is the enemy? 19. 19. Yeah, that hits. I mean, I don't think there's any way. He has four health, so there's no way. Don't ruin it for us. <laughs> hey, that's Max again. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Plus the D6. 16 damage. Yep. He is, he is downed and out. And gone. And I'll just let out a blood-curdling cry of victory. What does a moose's blood-curdling cry sound like? No! <laughs> <laughs> yes. The war cry of a moose. <laughs> just a giant foghorn. <laughs> uh, Bertram, what would you like to do? There's this giant wall of fire that, and no bandits in front of you. Okay, so I'm just going to run straight through the fire. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yes. I, I can only glide. I can't fly up. <laughs> Jump from our top of the hill. Oh, yeah. I guess it is possible. Could I actually just, like, r- run and kind of jump and glide? Use my reaction to uh, to glide down? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. my wings. So what's your what's your speed? Uh, so my speed is forty. Forty, nice. Yeah, yeah. So you can you can absolutely do that. The the wall of fire is only twenty feet high. Cool. So yep, um, jump or run up the hill or run off the hill, jump and like kind of glide my ar- arms out. Nice. And then as I get to as I cross the hill, I'm just gonna be like getting close. As soon as I'm getting close to landing, I just bring out my warhammer and shield again. Nice. I guess is there being on the other side now. How far away am I? Or can I see anyone else? Uh, they're probably about uh, 50, 60 feet in front of you. Okay. I guess I'm just going to take my action to dash. Okay. Nice. So that's another 40 feet. 40 feet. So you're about 10 feet behind him? Yeah. Okay. And I'm also going to bonus action rage. Oh, nice. Nice. Yes. Yes, yes. What does it look like when you rage? 
Um, so when Bertram rages, it's more of, it's like less of he's going like berserk and more he's just like, I like focus, like target acquired. I will do everything I can to stop this one person in front of me. <laughs> nice. Yellow horse blinders on. Basically like tunnel vision. <laughs> All right. Uh, Otis, you're up. Uh, you see, you see uh, the wonderful image of Bertram flying op- over this wall of fire uh, and landing and chasing off after the wolf. And uh... I want to pull a gold out of my pouch. Okay. And I want to flip it to Wesley. Okay. Hey, save me a table tonight. All right, I'll catch up with you then. Sh- sure. I mean, looks like this looks like uh, the boys you were traveling with here might be in for a rough night, but uh, at least we can go catch up. Catch up with uh, any points to the the wolf and the the other guys up there. You don't need to know. I'll catch up with you later. Okay. Basically, I'm trying to get him to go to Marshview. Uh, yeah, that would be. Let's make a persuasion check then to get him to stay kind of out of it. Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Uh, he kind of hops away towards Marshview. Uh, kind of pauses and looks looks back every once in a while and kind of. Keeps hopping a little ways. See ya. And then I'm going to try to just move after the wolf and the dude with the box. All right. Sneakily, hopefully. Ideally. Okay. Uh, roll uh, a three stealth. Tops at least. Yeah, roll a stealth check. Ten. Ten. Okay. Uh, yeah, they are uh, taking off and running in front of you. Uh, yeah, it'll take you a little bit to get, like, through the trees and, and uh, over to them. Sure. Quill. So it's still a wall fire. Still wall fire, no bandits in front of you, a large raging moose that is also, but not actually raging because he's not a barbarian. But <laughs> So I'm going to, there's no bandits. No bandits anymore. No living ones. <laughs> I'm going to run through the fire. Do it. Run through. That's, oh, geez. I rolled really well. Uh, so you take... Yeah, so you did the heated side towards you guys, obviously. Um, make a deck save. 19. Yep, that succeeds. Okay. Uh, so you would take half, so 16. 16 damage. Okay. Because I rolled, I rolled 32. <laughs> Wowza. <laughs> yeah. Glad I succeeded. Yeah. Okay, so, and then I'm going to continue running. Am I within 120 feet of the rooster and yes. the wolf? Okay, yep. so then the, of, of the rooster, yes. Okay, so yeah. Um, am I within 30 feet? Mm, yeah, so I ran yeah, you'd 60, be in... Or you'd, 50, I ran 50. You, yeah, yeah okay. you'd be within 30 feet. I'm going to take three attacks. Okay. I'm going to assume that a 11 does not hit. It does not. Does a 16 hit? Yes, 16 hits. 12 damage. 12 damage, okay. Still flapping, but uh, he is looking hurt. Okay. Uh, so he kind of glides uh, to a stop and then takes off uh, running the rest of his movement. And as he's running, he casts a spell out in front of him. Uh, and immediately through the forest, a big circle of darkness encompasses encompasses Bertram and then the wolf and the uh, big Mopok, the big raccoon guy, are all now sucked into this ring of darkness that is in there. Okay. And the... I believe the wall of fire goes down because that's concentration. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's what he does. And now there are some things happening. Bertram, you can hear, because you're close enough, the case getting set down, things happening there, and then you start hearing a like that. Kind of like a a, a magical (laughs) womp. Otis, in this trees, you also see just like this magical darkness kind of encompass an area. Am I above it? Uh, You are above it, but you can't see through it. Sure. But what you do start seeing, uh, you also hear that, that pulsing noise. And you see dark green tendrils shoot out to the to the plant life and the trees outside of the darkness. And wherever those tendrils attach, uh, that bark starts to become charred and ash starts to like flake off of it. 
Cool, 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 cool. No, 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 no. Jean, it is you. I am going to full sprint it. Nice. Straight to down. Nice. Uh, through the darkness. Through the darkness. Just yep. in a straight line. Yep. Has to end sometime. Yeah, that's true. What's your uh, movement speed? Uh, 30, so I'm dashing, so it's 60. 60. Okay, so you're able to get into the darkness. Yeah. Uh, make a... Just make a luck check. Just roll a d20 for me. Just what, a flat? Yeah, just 18. flat. 18. Okay, nice. Uh, Bertram, you hear right beside you a large animal <laughs> pass right beside you, and uh, you're thinking, it could have been trampled. <laughs> Do I see him go into the darkness? Yes. Do I see how close he is to the pulse, the origin of the pulse? Uh, where the tendrils are? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he is about uh, 30 feet away from that. Okay. Yep. Uh, so you did run right past the uh, rooster guy. He's not quite in the darkness area. I can't see him. Well, no, he's not in the darkness. Oh, you're, you're just like laser focused. I'm on... in the darkness. You right, weren't. But you ran past him. The... Oh, he wasn't in the darkness? No, no. The rooster casted it in front of him. Oh, so... I would have stopped at him. Oh, okay. Yeah, stop at him. For sure. Was he 30 feet? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to... We'll say that. Smack him now. Do it. Smack it. Smack the Con- rooster. That concentration. <laughs> <laughs> 20. Not natural. That hits. 11. Ooh, <laughs> Nice. As you uh, smack him, he immediately topples over and uh, dies. <laughs> Does the wall of fire and darkness disappear? Uh, the wall of fire was already gone, but yeah, the darkness uh, disappears. So as the wall of or the darkness drops, uh, you see that there is a, this large kind of machine that has been placed on the ground uh, that was that the large raccoon was carrying. And it has a huge HB kind of stamped in the center of it. Uh, And it's kind of pulsing with energy. The tendril, you can clearly see there are tons of these tendrils that are attaching themselves to all the greenery uh, around uh, itself. And uh, everywhere where it attaches, it is basically turning into ash. Uh, But from within the object itself, there's this dark orange color that's emanating from it. And as you you kind of looking, and the wolf uh, sees you all, he's kind of looking around at the three of you who are down on the ground, and then he looks up at the trees where Otis is, and he says, Oh, so, it is you three, huh? Ah, you four, I suppose. Well, no matter. At least I know who we're up against who the great maple chose to try and what? Stop me? Stop us? Stop the truth? You will get a taste of the truth now. And he jams down a lever. And I need everybody to make a constitution save. Constitution, Constitution save. Not a good save. You get plus two. Sweet. If you're within ten feet. Natural twenty. Nice. With a plus zero, so twenty. Yo. Eleven. Eleven. Eight. Eight. Eighteen. Eighteen. Woo. Awesome. And oh, Otis got a twenty. Uh, so you're knocked back, and there's this. Flash of bright light. Jean and Quill, you guys fail. Uh, so you take 10 force damage and are knocked back 15 feet. Mm. Uh, Bertram and Otis don't take any damage, uh, but you are also both knocked back 15 feet. Okay. When your eyes kind of adjust after you see some blue spots, they're gone. The wolf, the machine, just gone. And in its place looks like an explosion happened all of the greenery the shrubs are just blown back and everything in a perfect 80 foot circle is just ash so did it like consume the trees barren or is it like a tree is burnt it's like a tree is burnt okay it it looks like it was in kind of like a dome so if it was halfway up some trees there will be just like a line where there's the bottom half then is just ash 
I'll kind of walk over to where everybody is. I was going to walk toward where, where, the, where it Yeah. Okay. Go look at it a little closer. Can I come into the center? Yeah. Anybody want to investigate? I, I don't think... Yeah. At this point, Otis is probably not going to investigate. He has something else on his mind. Yeah, I, I will... I'll investigate, but it's not going to go well. I, yeah, I will immediately... Well, first, double check. We killed everybody. Yep. Nobody okay. nobody around that you can see is, is alive. Okay. Uh, then, yeah, I will investigate as well. Okay. Like, can is, I roll like, at disadvantage? I mean, somebody can just investigate and somebody else can give the help action. I was going to like look around to see if the body is that that we fell were still around like is the rooster still behind us and is the yes the the other i want to say badgers but not badgers raccoons. uh raccoons <laughs> yeah yep they're yeah. all still there okay and do you want to give me the help action then i basically wanted to fail honestly because i'm still so like blinded by anger okay then so i don't think i'm gonna be any help okay cool. I'm, I'm just basically looking just kind of like glaring at the spot where he was okay yeah you're looking at the explosion though yes so, all right yeah I'll, I'll go up and i'll like Bertram will go up to uh, to Quill and kind of help him. Like I did say, there was a there was an HB on the on the sign and HB. Got it. Does that mean anything to any of you? Somebody can make a uh, history check. Fifteen. Actually, that's not fifteen. That's a sixteen. Three. Eighteen. Eighteen. Three. Nice. Yeah, Bertram, you would kind of recognize that uh, as the symbol. It's, it's on a lot of, actually, children's toys, the same kind of symbol. Uh, and it stands for Hasselpaw and Beckett. Uh, and they were kind of like inventors, little trinkets, making little toys and things. And they always stamped all of their products with uh, the same HB. Would that, there was a distinct logo on the back of the rooster's clothing. Would that be related to that company? No. No, that would not. Can I make some more investigation on the actual... Yeah, like, I was saying that as a also, like, point that out as a means of also, I'm giving him the health action. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah, go for it. Make your uh, investigation check with advantage. 13. 13? Uh, so as you're coming up to the spot, ground zero, where the explosion seemed to happen... Uh, there is a perfect circle about five feet around uh, where the grass is not burned. Uh, the kind of sticks and stuff are not there. But it also doesn't look like this grass was from this area. It looks like uh, it's a much darker green than what was than what's around you there. So there's a patch of grass in the middle of the scorched area. Yep. That doesn't that look like say he was transplanted essentially? Essentially, yeah. Everything else around it is is burned and turned to ash and everything, but this circle uh is being a, not be, untouched. Being a ranger, what I could I could I do like a survival or nature check to see if I'm familiar like with where this type of grass would grow area wise? Yeah, go for it. So sixteen. Uh yeah, you could tell so it's very kind of a dark, lush green, getting a lot of, uh, like, nutrients and stuff. Um, so you can tell that it is probably from somewhere in the muck fields. There's that marsh that's kind of on the other side of, of marsh view, believe it or not. You can see it from marsh view. Um, and you can recognize it from somewhere there. You said like, marsh fields? Uh, mock fields. M-O-K-K. Mock fields. Well... This is interesting. We've never seen anything like this before in any of our missions. The sort of transporting ability that takes grass from others and this damage. This this worries me like the what's happening to the tree back home. It's pretty messed up. It looks very similar to how your sapling looked. I think this is I think we're on the right track. Bertram? Uh John? How are you feeling about this all? John's like, I think he's calmed down by now. He's like, he stands up confidently. He says, I do not know what we should do now. I am not the smartest. You guys figure this out. I must make sure the town is okay. And I'm just not marked right to the town. We didn't, we didn't get your wolf today, but don't worry. I've got a plan. 
And I think that's where we're going to end this session. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, I Once again, I'm your GM, Tim. And going around the table, we've got... Nathan playing Bertram Honksley. Seth playing Otis Sagrain. <laughs> Are you... Are you playing Otis the Great? <laughs> as far as anybody knows. Yeah, it's too bad we weren't there when all that was happening. What happened? It's too bad, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he shouted out the, that clover that was shouted out. You guys all heard that. I know, but we missed everything else. It's true. Yeah. yeah what happened? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> great role playing. Um, yeah, I'm the other Seth, and I was playing Quill Graybill. And I'm Kyle playing Jean Orton, who is completely oblivious to what happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for us here. We'll catch you next week. Guaranteed Adventures is brought to you by Tim Gallegos as our GM, Nathan Kuypers, Seth Guthrie, Kyle Bateman, and myself, Seth Kleinwort. Rob Benson created our theme song, and our Maplewood theme is Wonderland by Roman Sunny K Music. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at GU Adventure Pod. That is the best way for you to engage and hear any updates from us. As we said at the beginning of the episode, please go give Tomes of the Chaos Bard podcast a listen. If you feel up to it, Rate us on your podcast platform of choice. Here's a preview of our episode coming out next week. Sounds like that is eight bodies now. We don't need to kill him. Oh. Just just like John keep him go, keep an go, eye go, on him. John, go get the the guards. Dude. Get the guards and and take have them take him to jail. Take him to jail. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to uh, look at Jean and be like, yes, and give him a knowing nod. (laughs) I will walk out and get the guards.